I'm Richard Swinburne. I'm 32 from the UK. I've been overclocking for about 15 years uh, as an enthusiast, not with liquid nitrogen, but I was writing for, for media and doing overclocking as media for about uh, six, seven years before joining ASUS in 2011 <laughs> and uh, joined the ROG team in 2011 until last month. And my, my online name for, for Twitter and for hardware body is Bindi Baji. That was also for 16 years or so from Red Dwarf, if you, if you remember that. My education is chemistry. I did a chemistry degree, uh, which seems weird, but I, I, everything, everything on PCs is self-taught, like most people. I, I have no electrical engineering knowledge, but everything is taught from simply asking questions, playing around, reading online. I, I learned a lot as media talking to the engineers in Taiwan. When we get, when we come out here, because um, I used to be based in the UK, but then I moved out here. And we learned a lot, because I reviewed motherboards predominantly, and then CPUs, and then memory. And I learned a lot from the engineers about the, you know, the power, the delivery, the, the front side bus tweaking, all, all the way down to sort of TRD settings. and. and memory timings and stuff like that, back when, when frontside bus was a thing. Overclocking went from, from nothing to everything uh, because performance goals were, an, were a driver for review scores and for, for te technological, uh, you know, you were able to sell on the fact that you were faster than someone else. So it, it, it became, it always is, been more important and being the best performance motherboard is, is is, it's, a, it's a driving force for the whole industry. It's, it's been a great thing. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say there's been a golden day. I think I'd say that there are people who have preferred certain sections of time where they were perhaps better at it or perhaps knew the, the platform better and uh, had more time to learn it and stuff like that. I mean, my, my time to learn it was Pentium 4 through Core 2 Duo Quad days and after that, when I got to, in fact, when I joined Azus, I did less overclocking because we were doing just work based on it. So uh, I, I left the overclocking side to the RD guys. So uh, it was just, it was just for, for fun and, and for, for you know, casual stuff. But in media, you really had to learn about everything, and that was that was that was that was fun back then. I think it's changed, but not for not for better or worse. It just Five years ago, I was like that. Five years ago, I looking at as media, just getting out of the industry, having spent five, six, seven years writing about motherboards with no auto overclocking, seeing people just press a mother, press a button, I just feel like, ah, oh, that's just that's just taking all the all the love out of it. And it was like looking at my industry going into into nothing, into people. I was I was you know. Put your put your nose in the air a bit on that one, and that's. But it's having seen how popular it is, how popular the feature is, from a sales perspective, and from from a from an entry level, getting people into it perspective, it's it's giving people the idea that anyone can overclock, and what is the benefit? I didn't know what about overclocking was. You mean I can just press a button, and so so someone in a sales room somewhere who has no PC experience can go boom. There you are. That's how to do it very quickly. And they go, oh, I didn't even know you could you could do this. And then they take it home. They they look about what it means to have an overclock PC, and they start getting into it. And then then they discover benchmarking and this and that, and then they start tweaking it. So that, and it just opens up. And it's 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 like the benefit of of. I mean, people. Before there was buttons to press, there was in Windows overclocking. And people would go, "Oh no, don't do, don't tweak from in Windows. You can only do it from the BIOS because that's hardcore." <laughs> okay, but now loads of people does it from these guys do it, you know, tweaking from in Windows and having the special software. <laughs> yeah, so everyone got there eventually. I, it, it's a, it's another entry thing. But in, in terms of every sport, there's going to be cynicism. Uh, if you go to motorsport, there's, there's guys who are casual motorsports fans, there's guys who are casual modding cars fans, all the way up to big money F1. 
there's going to be cynicism in it, but people still watch F1, people still watch the, the live stream and people still watch the, the cool of clocking the world record breaking. Uh, in, you know, there's always going to be drama in every industry, that, that, that's fine, just let, just let those, that, those guys deal with that drama and get on with it. Just enjoy it for the fact that there's, there's enough money in it so, so more people can get into it and, and, and take part and, and have events like this and everyone has their own kind of events. What's worrying is that the, the push towards gaming has kind of stopped a few, like we don't have MOA anymore, the, the Gigabyte one's kind of stopped. Um, uh, so there's less online events, but there's still offline events, which is arguably better because people don't have to leave the comfort of their labs and anyone can join in. So anyone can get into it and jump out. They don't have to travel abroad, so that's okay. There's always the AMD route if you want more freedom, uh, just, just, for, just for playing with freedom. And I think mm, maybe Zen is going to bring back some of that next year. I don't, I, mean, I don't know the platform yet, but uh, I hope it's going to be competitive and we're going to have a bit more AMD Intel head to head because that's what the industry needs really. It needs more, 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 more live comparison, more uh, dynamic battling. And right now, because of AMD's financial issues, the, the Nvidia is going off, taking a load of market, Intel's dominating completely. So it's, the market condition could be better from a consumer perspective and from an overclocking perspective. So we can only hope they get a good core and, and, and we get more freedom and more choice. The next challenge is getting more people who are buying PCs at the point of buying PCs when, like the workshops, but thousands of workshops in every country, somehow doing that. I don't know how someone's going to get the resources to do that. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. That, that's the next challenge. Mobile overclocking, wow. Um, it's a lot harder because you've got to have a lot more stuff in it and obviously Mobile's a lot more integrated. You can't just slap a pot on a, on a CPU. So I'd I'd like to I'd like to go down to the to the SOC level, like we do here, with with having you, you know you delete a CPU and you get straight to the silicon. I'd like to see that on SOCs. I'd like to have dev boards from Qualcomm, from MediaTek, from Intel, from um, all winner, everyone, even ARM themselves, where you could you could overclock it just for for, for fun. Whose design is the best? You know, that that and, and get more and more enthusiasts in, in it that way. That even if I mean people do they, there's, there's IoT dev boards like Raspberry Pi, etc. I mean they're they're relatively inexpensive. I expect that the the other developer boards will be higher price but getting getting people interested in uh, performance tweaking SOCs optimizing SOCs and and just something different something some something you know growing the the interest in the, in the tech industry and, 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 and performance industry yes I mean there's no there's no one in those companies who does who has the links with extreme overclocking they've got to have someone within it to try to break the the, the cycle as it is and everyone is so fixated on, unless it's applicable to a phone, we can't say anything about it. This doesn't, doesn't matter. Like, come on. I mean, no, no one in, in, in any OC event has any application to real world PC, <laughs> but it's just fun. It, it's, it's the exploration of what the silicon can do and what the system can do. That's what it is. It doesn't matter that it doesn't run word at three million frames per second. It, it's not necessary. It, it's not necessary to say that the battery life is gonna be non-existent, it doesn't matter, it's, it's just to see who has the best engineering design, who has the best silicon uh, quality and yeah I mean the, the, the phone industry is the PC industry in the late 90s, they, they, you know, they, they, they've, they've come so far so fast but they, they, they've left some other avenues to explore. If, if extreme, if, if if extreme gaming and, and esports gaming can be a game and a sport, why not? Why not overclocking? 
it's just getting to that level now. I mean, esports uh, e gaming went through a, a, a growth patch and then everything crashed because all the money fell out of it. And then it's just picking up again due to mostly LOL and, and Dota size and the money behind that. But that's just, you know, the money and players are explosive size compared to extreme overclocking, which is a, a niche, but it represents enthusiast, um, enthusiast uh, PC buildings, which is always going to be there. Yeah, and, and, and a couple of companies, Cooler Master for example, are, have said gaming market is now saturated for PCs, although there's too much attention to it, we're going to go back to doing PC enthusiast, and trying to accommodate modders and overclockers and, and uh, have best PC design. So it, it's, it's, there's less money in it compared to esports gaming, but it's still as significant, still as competitive. When Hobot last year came to us to pre-launch the uh, esports IO site, Adley and I were very interested in doing a season to try and keep people interested over a long, long period, which is what the IOC showdown turned out to be. So that's why uh, we designed it as that and to have the, the successive things, not to have one event, then the next event, the next event, just around product launches, because that's a tad cynical in terms of they only want it to have you know, benefit for themselves. We want to kind of build up the whole thing, and that's where the enthusiast side and the extreme side came from. So you, you, you separate the, the, the uh, rewards that you can give away to both, both things. So that took a lot of convincing internally. <laughs> but, uh, uh, it was trying to show that we could grow the reputation and the brand and the, the, the enthusiast side, which has loads of people and not just appeal to the high end. High end guys are important, of course, but we want to grow the entire thing. Like I said, rookies and novice and stuff. I still don't agree with HWBot's way of categorizing rookies and, and amateurs, though. It's got to be time limited. Categorization is, is not my favorite way of doing it. It's better to let people jump up to the next level once they've attained a certain points level. So they get, they get you know, they've overclocked and they've learned so much, they go to the next stage, they've learned some more, they go to the next stage. So that's typically how a sport works. You know, you, you get, you get, you know, you start from carts in, in motorsport, then you go up to the next level, sort of Formula Ford or Renault, then you go to like Formula 3000, Formula 2, Formula 1. You, you've got to get better, you've got to win series. And when I, when I, when I see people earning the 0.1 points on Hubbard as a rookie stuff, I kind of feel sorry for them because you want them to win big and feel encouraged to do the next step. People, people are so used to, to, to earning big points and big monies and stuff like this and all the gamification of all the applications that you, you, you have in 3D Mark or, or on your phone or, or whatever, that there could be some optimizations in that system, but hopefully we'll see. It's, it's about getting the best experience, even, even if you're, you're only gaming on it and overclocking a little bit, and, or even if you're, maybe 3D rendering or, or whatever, it, it's getting value out of it. And you go to gaming events, even, even pro gaming events, and their PCs are set up so poorly, uh, you know, the, the cheap power supplies or, or sort of massive graphics card and the cheapest motherboard they can get. You're just like, why did you, why, why? And you've got like an i7 in a, in a, in a $40 motherboard. And you just, just, come on. Um, AMD back in it, really. Uh, I'd like to see uh, more competitive industry, frankly, uh, and, and more, more variety, uh, more options. Uh, just from a consumer's perspective, uh, that's always been my way, uh, just to, to see more, more options. Even, 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 like I say, phones, AMD, Intel, um, Nvidia, just, just to be able to overclock on anything, <laughs> you know, if, if there's something with a with a with a clock gen, you should be have access to it. That's what I want to see, because it, it it could be fun. <laughs> I changed physics. <laughs> that would be nice. 
Um, I'd, I'd, I'd change physics and I'd, I'd, I'd give more options to the, to the, to the industry. That's, there's two things, but you know, they benefit each other.